Hey everyone, welcome to another video in the Coding Habits for Data Scientists series. So in this video, I will show you how I came to learn and love PyCharm. And I will show you how you can use that to become a more effective data scientist or ML engineer. This video, I'll split it up into two parts. The first part is set, getting PyCharm set up for your project, getting it to know about your virtual environment so that you can start making intelligent suggestions. And the second part is um, probably 10 or so tips or shortcuts that um, you can use to refactor, rename things, use autocomplete, read documents and things like that. Uh, if you want to code along, I highly recommend that you do so. You can git clone this repo and code along. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, first of all, you can download PyCharm. You can search PyCharm download and you'll find a link like that. Take the one for your operating system. Um, the awesome bit is that there's a free community edition. So I'm, that's what I'm using. And I have that already set up, uh, installed locally. So the next thing I'm going to do is to um, clone this repository. So I clone this. Before your IDE or PyCharm can make any intelligent suggestions, it first of all needs to have a virtual environment. And so I covered this extensively in one of the other videos in this series. Um, but in essence, we're going to install, uh, using Python 3 to install a virtual environment in a directory that is called .env. I'm going to activate that virtual environment and we're going to install dependencies into it. And what are our dependencies? It's nothing but whatever is specified in this requirements.txt file, pandas and cyclamen. So let's do that. So I'm going to open up the ID within, sorry, open a terminal within here. And also I should um, show you the readme. If you're coding along, all of these is also specified there. Just run bin setup. And the next thing we're going to do is to configure PyCharm to know about this .dmv directory that has just been created. So let's see how we can do that together. Here in this report, I have linked the, the documentation so you can follow through there. Or for now, I will just show you how um, it can be done. If we open up any Python file, in this case, this one. And so because we haven't configured PyCharm to know about our virtual environment, it's complaining like it doesn't know about pandas and succulent, even though we had just installed it. So let's tell PyCharm about this virtual environment right now. So you can hit uh, Shift Shift. And if you search uh, Python interpreter, and yeah, if you go under actions, select the one that says preferences project interpreter. And yeah, currently it's selected the default one for me, but if it's not there, you can click um, you know, add and then select existing environment, give it the path to your repo, which is PyCharm demo. Of course, it will be just more effective to copy and paste this so that you don't have to navigate so, um, all of these. Yeah, so the repo they just cloned .vnv, which is created by the setup shell script and bin slash Python. So click OK, OK. Once that's there, you can see the um, ID is starting to index. You can see that at the bottom here is indexing every file inside the VNV directory or your virtual environment. So once that's set up, uh, we're ready to roll. And a call out for the people who are coding along, we got to make sure that you and I were using the same key maps so that my shortcuts work on your machine as well. So to verify that, you can hit Shift Shift and I'll cover what Shift Shift this magic shortcut is later. But for now, search for key map and go under action section and, and select the one that says preferences. And there you will see what key map you're using. If you're on Mac, you can follow me and use the same one. But if you're on other operating systems, choose the one that is works for you. And in the comments section, I will link this link and you can select the corresponding one that you are using. And for example, if I'm using a shortcut called um, find usages, uh, you can look up the same name and look up for your corresponding shortcut. And with that out of the way, we are ready to roll. So the thing that we're going to refactor is a single Python file from the same repository that you just cloned. And in my other video, I take this example and cover it extensively how I refactored this. 
but essentially it is the Titanic data set. We're going to load the data frame, do some feature engineering based on passenger data and train a model to predict whether um, a new data point was the probability of that passenger surviving. So that's the context. And let's get started. The first shortcut, you can see that this is now grayed out, which is the ID trying to tell us that these are unused um, imports. So one of the very handy quick wins that I like to show here is optimize imports. And so with one command, all of that noise is gone. And the second shortcut is uh, auto formatting. This is again, another quick win that we can get here. So we can see that um, these commas don't have spaces, and here we have spaces, and there's extra spaces here, and here also there's some extra space. So just with one shortcut here, we can fix all of that, and now it's in a consistent state. And sometimes in certain code bases, maybe it's too big, you don't want to format everything. So if you want to just apply formatting selectively, you can select or highlight the section that you want to fix the formatting issues and then PyCharm will just apply it there and not apply it elsewhere. So you can do that as well. And the third shortcut I'm going to show is my favorite shortcut of all time. It is the kind of auto fix or fix issue shortcut. So in this case here, the IDE has some red squiggly line here saying that um, OS is not important. So whenever you see a red squiggly line or even yellow lines, you can do Alt Enter and it will fix it for you. For example, it's now right now just imported OS for me, which is great. So odd enter is useful for any issues where you see either date code or yellow squiggly or yellow highlighted sections. It is the ID trying to tell us that something's not right, and odd enter is the way to fix it in a quick way. So for example, here I've wrongly called a predict function with the wrong values. Like when we call predict, we would never pass in Y, right? So here is kindly suggested to say remove argument. So I'm going to go with that. And here we have another example of date code. So I'll enter. It's saying, oh, we are defining ypred, but we're not using it. So why not we remove it? So I'll enter is handy in many ways. And the last and possibly most powerful way in, as far as I can think for this example, is let's say I decide to use this function. And it's again read squiggly because it's not define or not imported. So I'll enter, import this name. It's figured out because I've installed scikit-learn in my virtual environment. It knows about this function and this package, so it can help me import it very helpfully. So I didn't need to go Google or Stack Overflow to find out, you know, for the hundredth time, how do I import logistic regression? So we, we stay at a high level uh, with, with the help of our a PyCharm IDE here. And the next logical thing to show here, I think it's about uh, refactoring capabilities. So there are a couple of shortcuts we can use. For example, now this RF model is no longer random forest. So we want to rename this to model, for example. And in the old world, you might just go change one by one, which is obviously tedious. So with PyCharm, you can simply do Shift F6 and rename it to whatever I want and it will rename it everywhere for you, which is very nice. So in this case, we just rename it to something generic called model. And that's the first refactoring capability. And let's say I wanted to rename prepare data and train model. And this is used in various places, right? In across different files. Um, so without this shortcut, I would have to go search and replace one by one. But in this case, if I were to rename this to with the shortcut, you would see that um, it would be renamed everywhere. So if I was to search prepare data and train model, this thing does not exist anymore anywhere. It's now all renamed to the new thing that I called it in our test. So it's kind of done it at, not just at the definition, but also the invocations and things like that, which is very handy. So the second refactoring capability um, is, let's say, extract variable. 
for example, here we have a magic string and I want to allocate it to a local variable. Just with one shortcut, we can uh, extract a variable, which is very handy. And the third refactoring capability I'll show you here is um, I will call it extract function or extract method. So for example, this file is obviously problematic with so much implementation detail and we might want to start extracting function and encapsulating some of that or rather abstracting some of the implementation details into functions. So you can do extract method. And before I just magically whip out the shortcut from nowhere, I want to show you how you can find the shortcut yourself. So if you right-click a section of code, there's always a refactor section. And all of these shortcuts um, are present everywhere. So like, for example, just now I used ext extract variable. That's the same shortcut here. Um, we can extract method, which is what we're about to do. So this is the shortcut. Call this uh, train model, for example. And so that's just nicely done it for me here. And I could move this to another file. I haven't tried this before, but let's give it a shot. So again, uh, I, I don't know the shortcut, so how do we find out? We can right click, refactor, and let's say we want to move this to another package. Um, my file is already called train model. Let's call this, um, don't kill me, but uh, for sake of this demo, I would just call it utils. It's a very bad, bad habit, um, but I just can't think of anything better now. But yeah, let's, we, we're gonna move it to a new file, for basically is what we're doing here. And so that's just, number one, created a new file for us. Number two, move the function here. Number three, in, fix the import for us um, in this file. So yeah, move func method is pretty use useful. And the next section that I want to show you is about um, documentation. So oftentimes when we write data science code, we need to go find the documentation and say, okay, what can I pass in inside this? which is again tedious and crazy. So with PyCharm, you can simply hit the shortcut and it will tell us what, fun what parameters we can pass into this function. And if this is not enough, we can also read the documentation on site. So um, if you hang around long enough, it should pop up, but if it doesn't do that for you, you can hit the shortcut and it will fetch uh, documentation for you. And here we can see um, yeah, this, for example, this is how we can use logistic regression. We import it, we fit it, pass in the X and Y, and all of those things that we used to have to kind of jump out of our ID and do, now we don't have to do that anymore. And we can see all the parameters, what are the types that it expects, and what are the values you could pass in. So that's handy as well. The next tip I will show, um, it's an opportune time now because we have, we are possibly experienced what I call death by tabs. There's so many things open and you know, my head space is just kind of all clocked up. So with uh, PyCharm, you can navigate code easily um, without having to click around and find things. There are a couple of ways you can do that. First, uh, let's close everything first. The first one you can use is to open something by name. So for example, I know I have a file called train model. I just hit shift shift. Uh, you can search by file or you can search by all and immediately it brings you to where you want to go. Another way you can also navigate is by searching for variable names or symbol names as they call it. So the shortcut is um, for me command option O. In this case, here you can see we are on the symbols tab. I know I have a method called prepare data and train model. I can just kind of start typing that and it would bring me there. So just by, if I remember my function name, I'll just go straight there without having to pass through all of these kind of noise, especially in a large project that gets pretty challenging. And with navigation, you can also 
jump into implementations and navigate kind of in and out of this uh, basically the graph of your function calls. So for example, my let's say my starting point is here. I've got a test called test model precision should be above threshold. I call this function and let's say I was starting new, I forgot what this was doing. I want to jump into the definition. You can simply hit uh, command B in the shortcut and say I'm reading the code and I want to go inside here. I can just hit the shortcut again and I'm brought into it. And if I want to jump out, I simply do um, the next shortcut to jump out. See, I'm back to where I started. And if I want to jump forward again, I hit the shortcut. And I'm in again. So I'm just kind of going in and out of this function sequence of function calls, which is kind of handy. The second last tip I would like to show is my favorite. So this is the git utility. So let's say I've refactored my code. I'm ready for a commit. I'll just hit the shortcut. And here we can, without leaving our IDE, we can review our commit together. So oftentimes when I'm pair programming, I like to just, before we make a commit with my pair, I will, we, we will just go through this together. Because sometimes we might find, you know, stray to-dos or comments or things like that. So this git diff is pretty handy. So we review it together, uh, we clean up the imports, the extracted function, we extracted variable here. Uh, we fix some spaces here, as you can see, there's no spaces, there's spaces now. Uh, we have new line. And say, for example, you didn't want to have this new line in the commit, you can reinstate it easily. Just click this and it comes back. Or you can ignore this as part of this comment by unchecking this. So this would be unstaged. And you can type your comment message here. Um, function, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you do, you can commit and click commits. And the last thing I want to show is the wildcard, um, which I use often on a day to day basis. Let's say I want to move method or I want to rename function, but I forgot what the shortcut is. So shift shift is our best friend here. It's like the search everything uh, shortcut. So you can shift shift will search for everything and you can zoom into symbols or actions, etc. if you like. So for example, let's say I wanted to um, uh, extract method. I forgot what the shortcut is and in here is helpfully suggesting to me that it is uh, for my operating system. Uh, Alt command M and I can do that right here. Alt command M extract method. Um, let's say I wanted to find out what is um, extract variable and I forgot. It tells us here the shortcut here. So yep, shift shift is your best friend or it's my best friend. And with that, um, that is pretty much all the shortcuts I wanted to show. I want to leave you with two last tips of how you can kind of get into the habit of using PyCharm more effectively. One is um, the keyboard shortcuts. If you search PyCharm shortcuts, you will find a helpful cheat sheet and documentation. Everything you need, uh, you can find here for your respective operating system. And secondly, there is a plugin called Key Promoter X that is really useful. So if I hit uh, Shift Shift, search for plugins, and Key Promoter X. So this one, once you install and restart your IDE, if you do something that for which there is a shortcut, it will have a pop-up to tell you that, oh, this is the shortcut that you could have used, and which is very handy. We, I don't, again, don't have to jump out to find things. It just tells me, okay, you can use extract method with this shortcut, or you can use extract variable with that shortcut, which is, yeah, pretty handy. So I highly recommend uh, you install this if, if you like. So yeah, that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you want to search more, there's a lot of great tutorials out there. Just search PyCharm tutorial and yeah, have fun with it. Also, feel free to leave a comment in this video if you have any questions, comments, or yeah, anything to share. Thank you.